Lee, as I was mentioning, in your article, you talk about these students in Shanghai that are kicking butt uh, in math, and the United Kingdom got the bright idea to bring 60 math instructors over there uh, to the U.K. to teach. Yeah, that's right. The U.K. sees that the math specialists teaching in China really understand how to teach kids about math. Those kids are at least two grade levels ahead of the United States, actually ahead of Massachusetts, which has the highest ranking uh, math scores in the country, two full grades ahead. So the U.K. decided we're not going to teach mathematics. We're going to bring Shanghai teachers over to the U.K., and they can teach our teachers what the tools they use to try to get across mathematical training and try to help those U.K. kids become better mathematics students. It'll be interesting to see if that works. Uh, Professor, I went to elementary school, middle school with a lot of uh, Asian kids. When I say a lot, maybe 5 to 10 percent or so of the student body was Asian. Uh, and uh, my competitors uh, in, in math and in whatever were always the Asian kids, not the black kids, even though uh, probably the majority of the well, maybe 50, 50 or so of my of my classes in elementary school were black, but in middle school, 95% were, were black and about 5% were Asian. And I had uh, close friends. One was named William Moore. He was Chinese-American. Another one was named Catherine Kumamoto, Japanese-American, Paige Morikawi. And they told me the same thing. When they got an A on an exam, their parents told them the exam was too easy. When they got a B on the exam, they told them they didn't work hard enough. A whole different attitude than the black kids. whole different attitude, Professor. Yeah, it is a whole different attitude. Um, there's a lot more emphasis on mathematics and the need for being able to develop logical clarity <clears throat> and the discipline that comes with understanding mathematics. And there's just so much more we could do for these kids other than just trying to say, we're going to throw you a life jacket and not expect you to be able to compete in mathematics because we don't think you're good enough. And that's the message that ethnomathematics and these ideas that white supremacy is the reason why those kids are failing in math, that's the message we're sending to these kids, that they aren't good enough. Mm -hmm. And they are good enough. Mm -hmm. They're just not being taught the right way. And as you mentioned, I think there needs to be more of an emphasis within the family unit that, that, that this is really important. I have friends who are from uh, Japan, from, uh, from China, uh, and here's an expression you never hear from parents. So-and-so is, quote, not good in math, close quote. An expression I heard all the time when I was growing up. I'm just not good in math. That expression does not exist in Japan. It just does not exist. No, no, it's, it's, it's a mindset. It's an excuse. Every, the human brain is an amazing organ. Everybody can learn math. They just need to have the right teachers, and they need to have the right expectations that there's no excuse that they're going to they're learn it, they're going to work at it, and when those things are present, good things happen. Mm -hmm. But that's not the mindset here. They're being told the, the wrong thing, which is you can't learn this material that the white kids and the Asian kids can learn. We're not going to even expect you to learn it, and that's just that's just just flat out wrong, and it's failing these kids. Finally, Professor, I know that you're a professor of economics and not a, an investment advisor, but I'm asking you: Should people take a look at Bitcoin? Should people take a look at gold, given all this quantitative easing and the inflation you and I are, are afraid of? Well, a lot of so Bitcoin is a, a digital currency. Uh, it's now, its market price now is about forty-seven thousand dollars for one Bitcoin up from, I don't know, maybe maybe a couple of dollars back in the day when it first started out. And a lot of people do think that that will be a good hedge against inflation. Gold is the traditional hedge. We haven't seen inflation expectations anywhere close to what we're seeing now. So, yeah, that's something people should consider if they're worried about inflation. And there's good reason to be worried because, as you know, that there's a lot of there's a lot of spending. There's a lot of monetary ease, and this always translates into higher prices. If not today or tomorrow, at some point in the future, that will happen. Professor from UCLA Economics, Leo Hanian, as always, Professor, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Larry, thank you. You got it.